Hey guys, uh, today we're gonna have a short discussion about JSON logger, how to deploy it to your exchange and how to utilize it within your projects. So why is JSON logger important and what is it? JSON logger is a MUL4 connector. There is also a MUL3 uh, connector developed uh, by the same person. Uh, this is actually a public GitHub repository uh, which belongs to Millsoft Consulting and uh, promotes best login practices. So as the name suggests, this connector allows you to log your messages in JSON format. So what's super important is to enforce uh, best uh, login practices and be consistent, right? So we see that as you see in the description here, Splunk elk aggregation tools, the reason they're so popular because they can aggregate and exploit data and actually make it super valuable for your organization as, as well as uh, make troubleshooting your APIs, which especially in MuleSoft are multi-layered with experience process system APIs we see lots of APIs all communicate to each other as part of a usually big transaction. So this JSON logger allows you to log your messages in JSON format that Elk and Splunk can easily utilize and build uh, upon as well as uh, carry correlation ID for the transaction. So you can see the transaction started, for example, in the experience layer at this endpoint, went to process, called several system APIs, returned with a smash message and so on. And uh, that makes troubleshooting much, much easier. So let's see how we can utilize it. You can actually clone this repository uh, from the public uh, GitHub uh, project. And I will provide all the links in the video description, obviously. So once you clone, you will see the following JSON logger, you see all the changes. And as a matter of fact, as I was making the video, I've noticed that the version is now 202 and contains some concurrency bug fixes which is important. So what we'll do is we'll actually deploy this to my exchange and then try to utilize it in the project. So let's uh, jump right into it. Let me log into my organization and I'm gonna show you how can you fetch your org ID. So that org ID is uh, basically important to be able to deploy to exchange. So the easiest way uh, is to go into Exchange, click any of your APIs, and you will see at the top, your org ID is actually used as a group ID uh, next to the uh, artifact ID that I'll, you are looking at. So this is my org ID, all right? The other way is to obviously through access management by clicking on your organization and then you will see your org ID right there. All right, perfect. So we got org ID out of the way. I'm gonna go back to exchange and let's now uh, look at the uh, settings. So I will also add the following link to JSON uh, tutorial. So this this uh, nice uh, JSON uh, logger tutorial is also available. It has two parts, one and two, um, and you can basically gain all the knowledge you possibly can about this uh, JSON logger, all the capabilities, uh, lately, we have masking, which allows you to actually strip off or mask uh, values of certain fields, JSON or XML fields, which makes the solution super powerful and nice. Uh, now, one prerequisite for deployment is to 
set up this server in XML in your Maven settings XML. And I'm gonna show you uh, along with this project, I will supply the settings XML. As you see, you need to have this exchange to server. So this is all you need to add to your settings XML. Obviously, replace exchange username and password with your exchange username and password. Uh, look at my other videos as far as uh, setting up the exchange and Maven and your AnyPoint Studio. So it's going to be the same credentials you use to set up your AnyPoint exchange. Um, so we, I already have it in my settings XML. So once again, ID should be exchange to, that's all we need. So previous versions actually 2.0.0, it required us to set up several servers and then uh, it was a, a little bit uh, complicated procedure to get this deployed. Now it's super easy. You set up exchange 2 and you're done. So now let's open command line. Um, as you see, I'm uh, in the JSON logger code base. Uh, once again, it's Millsoft Consulting public uh, repository. So let's uh, uh, let's see what's inside. And what we see inside is actually deploy to exchange uh, script. All right. So this script is what we're gonna use to actually perform the deployment. And uh, what I need for that is actually my uh, org id the one we fetched from exchange so let me deploy and deployment only requires one one parameter which is your org id press enter and it should get deployed So my bad guys, I was actually looking at the uh, concurrency bug branch. Um, so so that's where uh, the version was 2.02. It hasn't been merged yet. So thus, when we are trying to deploy, it's giving us 409. And if, if you actually run it with uh, dash X, uh, it will tell you that 409 means that the version already exists 2.01. And I can actually show that if I go here and you see the JSON logger is already deployed to Exchange. And I actually have two versions deployed, uh, 2 and 201. So when 202 comes out, you will do the same thing, deploy, uh, or if you want to deploy 201, just simply issue the same deployment and it will actually successfully deploy and in the assets of your exchange you should be able to see this connector with the name of whoever deployed it anyway and now uh, let's uh, look at the setup that we need to have in order to use a json logger in our project so we're gonna uh, import the same project we used before I'm gonna change JSON logger version to back to 201. Uh, note here, any point org ID is our organization ID. And then if we scroll down, the most important entry here is this uh, dependency. As you see, dependency always has group ID that matches your org ID. Look at my other videos uh, for the Maven setup and you will understand why. This is the prerequisite to deploy into Exchange. This is the name. This is the version, which is 201. And that's all we need. So now when we import this project, it should have the connector in it. So let's uh, try doing exactly that. Select the project folder. Always uncheck this. Finish. Okay, as you see, it's imported now. And one of your dependencies here will be JSON logger appropriate version. So right now this is open now. And as an example, JSON logger, 
we're gonna add the logger and you will see that uh, logger also requires configuration so usually we pass environment as environmental variable I typically utilize million v this way all your logs will actually contain name of the environment all right so this should be good enough let's add message I recommend using the function let's let's add the message I recommend using function with a single quote so here is the log let me expand this a little bit um, I recommend using category all the time because this way you can limit and set different priorities for categories so we want some sample API then you can obviously set your priority and trace point is also something uh, important in this case start is a good one so typically start as you see the trace points here all have kind of beginning and end after before start end. so the reason we have those is to create the scope to be able to track starting time and end time right and how long uh, it took to execute the block in between so this is the reason you have those trace points uh, and obviously read the documentation that I will show you that uh, I will include uh, as part of this video that goes into more details of how to use the logger so now if I save it the error should disappear so this is our logger within the project so thank you so much enjoy use the JSON logger.